Well, welcome everybody to our very first Main Street Connect um, official online event. And um, we are so super thrilled to have Tommy McFly and Kelly Collis. And we are just having more and more people join us. So um, I am just trying to let everybody in. This is my first time. Take your time, get everybody in. Yes, thank you. But while we are, while I'm just quietly on the side doing this, I just wanted to thank Tommy and Kelly who are crazy busy doing so much because this is their world is podcasting and just communicating and branding and marketing everything virtually. And here we are, everyone needing to do that at this time. So we were thrilled that we had this event planned. Um, and we're thrilled that you are our Main Street professional community, and we hope that this provides a lot of value for you. Um, and just a few little housekeeping tips to just touch base on is we are going to have a Q&A section um, at the end. And so if you have questions, um, we have a chat. You can do the chat function. And then when I see your question, um, I could unmute you and then allow you to ask your question to Tommy and Kelly. Um, otherwise, everyone will remain muted so that we can keep this moving smoothly. Um, and if you have any technology issues or any problems, just email us at info at MainStreetConnect.org and we will make sure we get you set up. Um, I wanted to give a shout out to Jana Sharp from Sharp Insight, who was our Zoom helper, who is, we are so grateful to be working with her, but also to have her expertise with Zoom. Um, again, just huge shout out to Tommy and Kelly. They are an incredibly just successful broadcasters for, year, for years. I'm gonna let them talk about their history, but they are incredibly magnanimous of the nonprofit community in particular and supportive of small businesses. They're doing so much to support us and um, those of us that are nonprofits and small businesses, um, all businesses really. Um, and we're just grateful to have their expertise. Um, one last thing I wanted to say is that because our whole um, mantra at Main Street is connecting people, providing a place for belonging and acceptance and a place to be and feel good. Um, that has not stopped because we can't physically have events. So this is a perfect example of one event. But if you look on our Facebook page, please, if you haven't liked us on Facebook, please do so. We started a kindness campaign where we're really connecting our community and then this Friday, we're going to have um, an email come out with lots of resources for ways to be connected. And we're starting some really cool things um, to keep you connected with one another. So look in your inbox on Friday, like us on Facebook, on Instagram. Apparently, we're getting a growing following on Instagram. And um, just be with us. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Tommy and Kelly. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us and thanks for being on here. I've seen everyone pop in with their video and, and they're muting. Uh, like, uh, like we said, if you have a question or anything, you want to pop into the chat. Uh, Jillian, thank you for having us. And thanks to uh, the Main Street Connect folks. You do incredible work. I've been so inspired to hear about all the work that's been going on, about the events and upcoming uh, summer 2020, the big day. Jillian says we're still on. The, the, the plan as of this moment, as of 12.04 on Monday, things are still going according to plan. So that's awesome. Uh, Kelly and I will, like, like we said, go through and just uh, give you a brief background on us and then really get into how you can continue to communicate and how you can adapt with the minute by minute changes that are going on. It's something that we didn't realize when we started out on our journey uh, about 18 months ago that we would be right in the thick of it. So uh, Kelly, I'll let, let you get started on a little bit of our background and we'll, we'll dive in. Sure. Uh, so Tommy and I do a daily live broadcast. Uh, we believe that we, until someone tells us differently, we are the only independent uh, digital broadcasters doing something live every day. Um, think of sort of your typical morning show that you might find on the radio, but we are, have our own app. We're on Alexa and we're also on Google Home. And the reason why I bring that up right away is because uh, about 18 months ago, we lost our jobs. We were in terrestrial radio. We were uh, on the air uh, here in the DC market for eight years. 
and um, we loved being part of a community. We had a very family friendly show. We were pretty dialed into um, different sectors of the community in the greater DC area. And uh, you can imagine uh, being content creators and being connected to the community via a, a, a radio tower and have that all of a sudden taken away from us. It was um, tragic in a lot of ways. And what we realized quickly after, um, and we'll get into some of the things that we did to kind of em embrace the new technology and the new format that we're in, is realize that technology is your friend. And we are now all learning that more than ever, um, but we were able to very quickly um, set up a digital broadcast um, using lots of amazing tools. And we, we didn't do it alone. We have a tech partner that's been great in helping us make it all happen. Um, and Tommy and I have been, just to give a little bit of background, Tommy and I not only broadcast together for many years here in DC, but we were also really good friends. Um, and we were friends before we uh, ended up working together. And you might imagine now our friendship is being tested more than ever, because um, we've never spent this much time apart. We're usually together broadcasting. Um, but because of technology, I am sitting in the home studio uh, and I'm able to dial in Tommy, who of course is at home, and we're able to do the live broadcast this way as independent broadcasters. We don't have a budget like Savannah Guthrie sitting in her basement at the Today Show. We've got, um, we're really using state-of-the-art stuff that exists and is out there. And I think we're going to see companies embracing that technology more and more, not just broadcasters. Um, and my background is in marketing and PR. Um, I did that before I was in radio, and it's you know, I think that these days I used to be really proud of being a marketer and a PR, but I think when you hear our presentation and you probably already know it, everyone in this day and age is a marketer. I mean, if you post on Instagram, if you post on Twitter or Facebook, you're marketing something, whether it's your kids or, you know, the new car you got, you are sharing a message to a network of people and that makes you a marketer. Uh, and we're going to get into a little bit of those nuts and bolts uh, as well. I'll turn it over to Tommy to fill in the holes there. Yeah, a little bit about me. I wanted to be a lawyer and things went very differently. Uh, I got a job at 15 at a radio station. I started out on the promotions team where I learned about grassroots marketing. And then uh, to cut through all the clutter of the story, I turned 20. I was brought to DC by a guy named Jack Diamond to be his producer um, on Mix 107.3, RIP, great station. Um, spent three years there, got my own evening show. And then when I uh, moved what they call across the street, when you go to the competitor to launch 94.7, uh, they brought me on to be the morning show host of a brand new station. And I suggested that we hire my smart Alex best friend, Kelly, to be the co-host of the morning show. And they were like, awesome. What radio stations has she been on? And I was like, none, but we've got chemistry. And we have a great run. We had a great run on Terrestrial and we are continuing our broadcast but what was interesting, we prepared for this talk today and we had all of the ins and outs of podcasting and how you can start a podcast and everyone can start a podcast and everyone gets a podcast. We were like, podcast Oprah was the plan. But with the last um, couple minutes, couple weeks, couple days changing by the minute, we really realized that what we did um, just instinctually when we lost our radio show is something that we can pass on to small businesses and hopefully give you a little bit of insight that could be helpful with how you are navigating the current situation. So like we said in the chat function too, if you have any questions, even specifically about your, we've got, a, we've got a, a great group here today. We can get to everybody. If you have questions about what your business is currently going through, we'd love to hear that. We'd love to be able to help in any way that we can. So I'm gonna share my screen for a second and uh, we can get started on, on going through the talk. So uh, as Kelly said, we're available on our app, Alexa, Google Home, but what was really interesting and we wanted to get to was how everything is changing currently by the minute. I started out my career as a broadcaster, but just like being a marketer, if you are posting things on the internet or talking to people in public, you are also a broadcaster because broadcasting is getting more and more narrow by the minute. And uh, the examples I have on the screen are some really interesting insights that I wanted to show about current clients that we've been working with and partners on our show. We work a lot with the Scope It Out uh, Colorectal Cancer Alliance. They had a huge event planned for March 29th on Freedom Plaza where thousands of people would get together and we would all run and we would fight colon cancer. Well, as you can imagine, that's not something we can be doing now. So yesterday, Kelly and I hosted a national 
digital broadcast with them, tying their walk in St. Louis and their walk in DC together with a scope it in. And we asked people to send us videos, asked people to send us their pictures. And together we created a Facebook live event that has had tens of thousands of views in the last day to bring people together. So there is a lot of really rough stuff going on right now, but there's also a ton of great opportunity there too. And in I the would, middle- Hang on, Tommy. I would compare it to just, because maybe not everyone saw our, our live broadcast on Sunday morning. If you watched last night uh, with the iHeart concert series with Elton John was hosting and kind of pulling together the different videos, was very impressed that Elton John did it. But actually, it's, it's a lot easier than you think it is to pull something off like that. And I actually, I think ours was very similar to that. We didn't have Elton John, but we were able to pull all these different elements and kind of combine them all together in this live show, because I guarantee you, none of that was live last night. Um, <laughs> so uh, just to compare, of you know, it's kind of just to see those two stark differences, us being an independent broadcaster, and then you have a big company like an iHeart or a Fox putting together these, um, string together these different content pieces that we all can do. And small businesses, yeah, can make it happen as well. Although we did have the Anheuser-Busch Clydesdales and we learned for safe social distancing, a Clydesdale, the horse, is about six <laughs> feet nose to tail. And so they told us, you know, St. Louis, Anheuser-Busch told us to keep a Clydesdale between ourselves at all times. So that's another fun way you can share that with your kids if you want, <laughs> as you're trying to figure out what is six feet and what is not. Um, and then with PenFed Credit Union, who we have a great longstanding year-long relationship of doing great good in the community, we can't necessarily go out and have big events in the community. So we pivoted and we took um, a PenFed credit card and we went to Farmers and Distillers, a great local restaurant that's trying to stay open, part of the Farmers Restaurant Group. We bought a bunch of box lunches and we took it over to the park police who had just last weekend been telling everybody who was not social distancing to not go by the cherry blossoms. So we felt like those men and women could use a little bit of a day brightener. And we turned that all into content. By everything we're doing and everything you're doing in your business now, as you're figuring it out, I really recommend that you figure it out out loud, whether it's on an Instagram story that goes away after 24 hours or something a little more permanent as an Instagram post or a LinkedIn post. Um, you're talking about what you're currently doing is going to really provide value to people. And that's the name of the game as far as building your tribe and as far as getting, getting people interested in what you're doing. People are connecting with people now more than ever. The beauty of social media, because there's a lot of terrible things about social media, but the beauty of social media is that it brings people together. And there's a reason why people share dog and baby photos and food photos, because it's a shared human experience. So if you're having a rough day, maybe not give all of the details about the rough day, but you know, share what you're experiencing on the platform you're most comfortable with. And we'll get into that because not every platform is for every person and you shouldn't need to feel like you are everywhere. Maybe you're awesome at posting great photos and you're awesome at Instagram, or maybe you have been on Facebook for a while. Um, Kelly and I spent a lot of time listening to a lot of podcasts about social media and social marketing and reading a lot of blogs. LinkedIn right now has such crazy undervalue. Um, LinkedIn is like Facebook was probably in 2010, 2011, before brands were like crazy on it and before like everyone and their mother was on it. And then, you know, generation after generation is now on Facebook. LinkedIn, it works the same way as Facebook with algorithms. And so Facebook is, or LinkedIn is dying for content because it wants to show more people more things. So if you're creating things, especially things that have value and that get reaction, it may be showing your business and your thoughts and your expertise and, and your post to way more people than Facebook is. Because Facebook's gotten really smart and now they charge you to, to boost things and even to have the people who like you or your business, you've got to give Facebook a little money. It's, it's total pay to play. But right now, there's a, there's a vast need for content on LinkedIn. And so their company and their algorithm is sharing more so than other platforms. Yeah, I would add to that on the uh, if if we want to talk take a step back and, and talk about LinkedIn for a minute, there's a couple features that you may or may not know in it. I think a lot of us are sort of looks like well from the photos I can tell I'm not judging, but we're all over the age of 20. 
I'm just like, I'm here. No <laughs> TikTok for anyone on this, web, on uh, this webinar. And, and maybe you joined LinkedIn 15 years ago when it was first a thing because you thought it was a thing and it was supposed to be where your online resume would be. And, and that's kind of like where you're supposed to park uh, that resume. It's so much more today. So a, a couple features. One, uh, there is a feature on there where you can blog. You can give a kind of a thought piece about whatever it is that's going on in your company or your business. I mean, it's obviously a little bit more business focused than saying I had a terrible day and my cat peed everywhere and my kid's not listening to me. It's a little bit more business focused, but it's got this blog feature that allows you to add a video or a photo. Um, and then the posts where you post in the status, you do better if you are tagging other companies or other people in that post. It is, it is for right now, and this is the thing about social media, it can change at any moment, that they will put you higher up in the algorithm if you are tagging different organizations. And it's, it can be anything, like any major organization from the Red Cross to GE has a LinkedIn page. So you can uh, talk about uh, all sorts of brands in there and LinkedIn loves it when you do that. That's great engagement. Um, and the idea is that a LinkedIn post can last a lot longer in an algorithm, the more likes it's getting. So it's not just getting pushed down chronologically, it can last for days as you get more likes and you know maybe the company see, is more likely to see whatever it is that you're writing in about if you, if you tag them in your LinkedIn post. Um, so that's really interesting. The one thing I want to take it also mention, Tommy, as you were talking about social media, it's so important in social media. Don't just put stuff out there. Be part of that community. Take time, like friends posts on all the platforms if you're playing on them or wherever you're playing. Take time to write thoughtful response, like a post. That is, that is being a good user. Uh, and it also, depending on the platform, um, they, the platform likes it when you do that. So if you're trying to get verified or if you're trying to get up in their algorithm of posts, being a good active member and not just putting stuff out there, but giving back goes a long way as well. Sometimes that's, it's, it's hard to do because you kind of like just flip through your posts, but take, them, take a moment to write something or like something. That's a great way to get more organic followers too, especially on a platform like, in, like Instagram. You know, if you go through and you're liking and you're commenting, people will see you comment because I mean, think about it, right? When you get a post like, oh, who is that? Or how did they find me? And then you'll go to their, you'll go to their feed and not necessarily that you will get a follow back, but at least someone will be paying attention to you. And also on LinkedIn, um, really fun fact too, a lot of people are getting on LinkedIn. So often if you're like in the nonprofit space or you're fundraising, people who are hugely high up at major companies are just like hanging out on LinkedIn. You can just openly message them, which is so much easier than trying to get to like the assistant's assistant to get to possibly have a phone call with the person. It's remarkable how many people um, are just hanging out on LinkedIn and just like super happy to chat because no one messages them on LinkedIn but their email box is a dumpster fire. So it's a great way to like cut through the clutter and send a little in message. Um, I wanna talk for a minute about video because I'm gonna, and ironically, I'm gonna take off my video to show you the slide about video um, before, we get, before we get to video. Um, video is your friend. So we're sort of in how do we create, how do we make it happen? Um, how do you create a great video? There's a couple techniques that I wanted to go over, like camera position and lighting and sound. I've got three tips for you about going live, and we're gonna think about two, where does it go when you have uh, those videos and, and you're, you're creating them. So um, really easy off the bat. I, I work for NBC as well, so I have a, a background in television. Lighting and sound are really important when it comes to social video. Specifically- Tommy, I, I'm turning my lighting on and off so you can see the difference of my, oh. my lighting. Oh, good. Yeah, you, you're turning your lighting off. I'll turn my lighting off too. So totally different when you have lighting on or off. Um, a good light can really be pretty inexpensive and it can make a night and day, a lighting joke, but I'm bummed, difference when it comes to your videos. Um, always try to not have like a light behind you, whether it's like a window that's open or like a, a, a light that's hitting you from behind. And you're gonna want to, um, I think the most easy way to get a great video shot is get one of those ring lights. You can get them on Amazon, whenever Amazon starts delivering at a normal pace again. 
Eric, I wasn't calling you out. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, as I was saying it, I was like, oh, Eric's got a window, but not you, Eric. <laughs> um, the ring lights are great. You can get ones that are battery operated. You can get ones that are plugged in. You can get all different varieties, but just something that's going to basically just hit you straight in the face with some great light is going to make all the difference. Um, when you have your phones, often your earbuds plugged into your iPhone or your Droid are, are a great way to get great sound right in there. And um, also you want to try to have good framing. So a little bit of space above your head, some stuff going on around you, but like a great framing of you, which is also really helpful for all the Zoom things we have going on. I can't tell you how many people um, are posting things or, or they're doing like a lot of Zoom and the camera's tilted up like this and you just sort of have a little bit of like an eyeball on them and you're like, hey, it's kind of like whack-a-mole or, or it's um, a little too far down and you're like looking at, you know, their keyboard. Um, you can grab things that are totally makeshift around the house too to put your camera up so that your camera and your computer is basically eye level with you or even if you want to cheat a little bit above and tilt it down. Same thing with selfies better look that way but <laughs> you can use um i have it straight on because i'm losing a little bit of my hair so that's why we're going that way uh but there's all kinds of items in your house that will able to boost your laptop up to the right level like for instance i'm using an alexa box right there to hold up which we're going to be giving away on the show uh next week so you can get creative you can find different heights and uh different ways to make sure that you're looking good on camera and and you know what's so crazy is, and I, I don't know how many people have kids, but my kids start their distance learning tomorrow and they're using Zoom. Um, and we had the same conversation here so they can interact with other classmates or with their teacher. You want, it's it's not about being vain or looking like Kim Kardashian. It really is just finding, a, just like you would sit at a business table and look at someone and not be on your phone or you know not be distracted with something else. You want to come to, uh, a video, whether it's a conference like this or any other scenario as we're doing more and more of these, as if the person is sitting right in front of you. Uh, so it's actually, you know, bringing it back to the kids, like the fact that I just sat down with my kids and explained to them how to be present in a Zoom call, we live in such a crazy world. But it's actually a skill set I know a little bit about. So I don't know if they listen to me or not because they're teenagers, but <laughs> there you go. Now, if you had like the Beyonce fan, that's a little overboard. But everything else we just talked yeah. about, I think makes sense. Although, you know, it's 2020, things are weird. If you want to have your inner Beyonce out there and you want to have a fan, go for it. That's great. <laughs> you can do that too. Um, many people ask about going live and, and should they go live on Facebook or should they go live on Instagram? I'm a big fan of Facebook Live because um, Facebook Live video is one of the things that Facebook is still algorithming, algorizing, I'm not really sure the proper term there, but the one that they're still giving a, a good preference to. So when you do it and when you go live, what are the best techniques? What are the best procedures? And those change all the time, but I've got three tips for you that I think could be really helpful when you do go live on Facebook. And so the first one is get right to it. People will go live on Facebook and they'll say, you know, hey, we're live, we're waiting for people. Oh, oh, hey, Kelly, Kelly's here, leave us a comment. Where are you coming at us from? Oh, hey, hey, Jillian's there, hi, Jillian. The Facebook Live is, is great because it's happening in the minute, but then once you're done, it gets reposted. And so unless you're gonna trim it, people aren't gonna sit through that first two or three minutes while you're like waiting for people to get there. So get right to it. And the second tip is give them a reason why they're watching right away. And I sort of did that with you a little couple minutes ago when I said, I've got three reasons or three tips to make your Facebook Lives better. Jump right at it with that. Hey, we've got three reasons why you should order from my small business now during COVID-19. And then reset. Hey, I'm Tommy. And as you might know, we've all been having situations where now we're doing delivery and takeout only. And let me show you the store. And I only have one person still working with us because we're trying to keep the doors open. But use that immediate hook to get them in as the second tip. And the third tip is uh, to constantly reset and a little bit of repeat. And that's because people are gonna come into your video in the middle, just because they're scrolling through their feed, you pop up, whatever, maybe you're two minutes in, always give them something that already happened and a reason to go back and watch your video once it posts up. 
right? So you can halfway through say, we gave you a 20% off code for order and delivery. And that happened earlier in the video. So once we're done being live, it's going to post up with subtitles and you can get that code once we're done being live and then continue on to what you were talking about. So when you go live, think of a couple things that you want to hit, maybe two or three things throughout it. So when you go live, you start it off, reason why you're listening, set up what you're doing, set up what's going on. And then um, you're going to do your live, reset where you're at. And then before you're done at the end, it's also a great time to say, hey, thanks for watching. We're wrapping up here. But if you go back and you watch us from the beginning, we're going to give you that 20% off coupon or whatever the thing is that you gave them. Um, and if you're feeling like super expert pro level, you can do that in the beginning. Hey, thanks for watching. We're going to give you this code or we're going to tell you this thing in just a few minutes. I appreciate you hanging with us. And then the longer people stay on your live, the more Facebook tells people that you're live. Uh, Tommy, do you want to talk a little bit about building our tribe? And, and yeah, so we, Tommy and I are trying to like text each other, make sure we're not jumping over each other uh, since we're not in the same place. Uh, the one thing with, um, when we lost our job suddenly, you know, we realize, and I think today is a good example if you're running a business or you have a company, realizing that you've got to find a way to communicate to your people, to your tribe, to your customers, whatever you want to call them, quickly and efficiently. And uh, we were able to, for us, we, we, we put up a website that all it had on it was dump your email address in here and we'll keep you posted of what we're doing, um, which was a great way just to collect information. But as you're spending some time, maybe you have a little bit more free time, uh, or maybe you will have more free time. It depends on what you're doing in your business. Now is a really good time to kind of check in and see how you can communicate with your tribe, with your customers. Do you have a database of emails, text phone numbers? Do you have uh, your most valued customers? Are you following them on Twitter when they tweet at you? Are you archiving that so you know where to find them if you need to tweet out something to them? Do you know um, how to quickly kind of um, touch whatever your customer might be in the way that they're used to speaking with you? Um, and that is something that Tommy and I take a lot of pride in that we were able to very quickly kind of keep in touch with our people. So when, for a, an example of that is not only the website, but when we got off the air, like it was so sudden, it was so drastic. Literally, we, we lost our jobs on a Tuesday. I'll never forget that day. And, you know, Wednesday in the middle of October, which is sort of our busy season as everyone's back to school and, and back in their routine after the summer, um, people turned on the radio that used to listen to us every day and be like, where are they? Um, so we were able to communicate and put stuff up very quickly and um, hit our database, our email database is probably, um, you know, very comprehensive as far as getting people to know that we'll be back. We want to let you know, but social media for us was everything. Uh, I know Tommy and I both are very active on Twitter uh, and it depends on your business. I, I know Instagram and a lot of companies are going to TikTok as well. We, we both have a list of every person that's ever tweeted at us or made a comment on something. We have them on a list. It's a feature on Twitter um, that we keep, I, mine is called, we, it, it's private. We both keep it private just so we know that, that those people are and when we do something, we're going to reach out to them. We're going to send them a DM. We're going to give them a follow back. Um, and that's such an important thing. If, if someone's tweeting about your brand, you've got to follow them. You've got to like get involved in them. There's nothing more exciting than someone when they interact with a brand, when they have that personalized experience with you. And that's really about building your tribe. Um, and there's so many ways to do it. It's so cool. And I think that you kind of have to not be overwhelmed by it. Um, but just pick one, pick a social media, pick a podcast, whatever it is that you're going to communicate with your tribe um, and just own it and then worry about the other stuff later. You can, you can build on the other, the other platforms. I do think it's important to be on multiple platforms, but don't let that get in the way of not going for a platform. Um, which kind of, I don't know, Tommy, if you want to build on the tribe, because I know we're running, we're getting close to running out of time because we do want to hit sort of podcast one-on-one. Um, did you want to add to that, Tommy? No, I, I think that's great. And you were saying like interact with everyone who reaches out and also find a ways to interact with and get ahead of, of negative 
uh, people too. I mean, if people are being like belligerently ridiculous and they're just not based in reality, well then, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. But if somebody has like a disagreement or if somebody has like a, like a, like a reasonable thing that, that they don't like about something, and if they took the time to vocalize it, it's really worth reaching out to them about it. Or it's, or it's interesting too, if you have a great social community, if somebody posts something negative, like on a Facebook thread or like on your Instagram as a comment, it's interesting to see how, how engaged your tribe is. Cause sometimes the tribe almost polices itself where we've had people be like, I can't believe you said that thing on the show today, completely out of context. And then our audience was like, actually you weren't listening because they said it before that. So that was, that's really interesting. And I think, um, a great example of that, we mentioned the Farmer's Restaurant Group earlier. They're a partner of ours. We love them. They got a really rough review in the Washington Post a couple of years back. And their tribe, the, the customers of the Farmer's Restaurant Group, like went to town on the reviewer because it's been such a part of, of their community. And, and they feel so, so involved in that brand and such part of the tribe that they weren't standing for someone taking cheap shots about how like the restaurant on Pennsylvania Avenue wasn't as great as it used to be or something like that. Um, but that was really interesting to see in real time supporters of a brand stand up for them. And we experienced that too. That that's how, you know, that there's true authentic authenticity to what you've done. You have a real relationship with your, your tribe, your peeps, your customers. We call them our Tommy show family. Um, when we went off the air, people like real humans, like were losing it over it, which was, the, one of the reasons why, why, why we do now what we did, because when it happened, we really didn't know what was going to happen, but people were like upset. So we put the website up and we were very open and honest with them too, being like, we're not sure what we're going to do, but we're going to do something. And so give us your email and we'll tell you what it is, which could be helpful in this current time too. If, if operations are closing or if hours are shifting, or if you're going to a different model, be honest with your customers and be like, we appreciate you for supporting us and we don't know what we're going to do, but as soon as we know, we're going to tell you. And until then, can you give us your email or can you find a way to, you know, to stay, we want to stay in touch with you and we want you to be the first ones uh, to know what we're doing. People love getting that like insider first information. And I know I went off on a tangent, Kelly. I apologize. It happens every day on the show, but let's go into podcasting 101. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh <laughs> So everyone wants a podcast or knows what podcasting at this point. It's, it's, it's a thing, right? I mean, it, and now everyone has a phone and an audio. It's so ironic because while radio, terrestrial radio is becoming like less relevant, audio format has never been more relevant with the onset of podcasting. It's just this weird thing that's happening in the industry. Um, but if you have a brand and you care about your brand and you're on social media or you have a Facebook group or LinkedIn group, think about having a podcast. It is like a website. And I compare it to like a blog maybe was, you know, 10, 12 years ago. The barrier to entry is super low. And don't be intimidated by the equipment. You can have a, you can do it on your laptop without even a microphone. Uh, there are so many services out there that will walk you through on putting up a podcast. And like anything else, there's, you know, best practices and there's some that are doing it really well and there's some that are not. But if you have a brand that people care about and you want to communicate with them, a podcast is a great way to do it. And it doesn't matter. You don't have to have one. I, it depends on what your business is, but you don't have to monetize it. It's just another tool to communicate with people that want to hear from you, your brand, your executives, whatever. Um, you know, Tommy and I, we offer some consulting services. I'm not trying to do a, a hard sell on that, but we offer some consulting services on how to get started and how to jumpstart that process. Um, but it's, don't be intimidated by that because it, it is actually really doable to do. And today I'm a huge, huge sports fan. I love, I'm a big Nats fan. I'm in mourning with the season being postponed until I don't know when. Uh, I love the Capitals as well. Um, and I just am craving anything sports right now. And I was so excited to see today, the Wizards announced that they're doing a whole podcasting channel. They have three or four different shows that they're launching. Um, some of them are gonna be broadcasted by their play-by-play -play, um, broadcasters. Uh, some are gonna be behind the scenes, talking to the players, talking to the coaches. 
it's brilliant. And I am, I'm, I'm shocked that the that sports teams are not doing that more right now as fans are just craving anything, this vacuum for content. Now is the time to do stuff like that because people have the time and they want to consume. They're missing their normalcy of their life. And that's sort of a big example of how they're doing it. Uh, and I can't wait to check it out to see how they're, they're sharing that content. But podcasting is something that should be on your to-do list. Um, whether it's to listen to one, start one, f find some inspiration. Um, other, you know, maybe your competitor has a podcast that's worth checking out. Maybe your mentor, maybe someone that you want to be when you grow up has a podcast. It's a great way to kind of get into the mindset because so many people are doing it. I think there's over a million podcasts on um, on uh, Apple, which is sort of the preferred uh, platform as of now, but that all is changing with Spotify and some of these others that are doing it as well. Um, and, and nowadays too, on, on Google, you can search for podcasts. So if you're looking for something of like, how, how do I learn how to knit podcast? That's going to be served up for you. So there's, it, you don't need to kind of get a referral from a friend of a friend to do, find out what their favorite podcast is. It's actually searchable that you can find um, whatever it is that you're looking for. Um, and what a great time to go for a walk and social distance and stick some earbuds in and listen to a 20, 30 minute podcast. Um, so I encourage you either to reach out to Tommy or I to learn some like podcasting 101. We're happy to share that with you and share some of the insight that we have. If you want to start a podcast, we can take you to the next level too. Um, but I definitely encourage you or your company or your brand to get involved in that space. It's, it's not too late. It is really noisy there. But it's one of those things, you just got to do it. You just got to rip off the Band-Aid. And if it's been on your list for a while now, now is the time to kind of tinker with it and, and, and figure it out. And there's a bunch of easy ways to do low barrier entry is one of the things we had on the slide because there are literally things you can record a voice note on your phone and upload it to. That's the more, you know, the, the more entry level side of things. But then it goes up to like full production of like the serial podcast and everything uh, in between. Yeah. We do recommend that if you're gonna try it or gonna get started with it, do a limited series to start. So in your own head, like storyboard out or write it down somewhere, you know, four or five episodes, like what are the five things I wanna talk about on a podcast? And just accomplish that. And if you liked it, great, then do another five. But people who set out to say, you know, every week I'm gonna sit down for an hour and talk about things, those are the people that really get just tripped up over their own shoelaces before they even get going because you do one and you're like, oh, that was so much. And I got to do one next week and then week after. And it just seems like this like dark hole of podcasting. Um, same with starting to create content on your social media platforms. Set out to do one LinkedIn post a week and see how that feels and see where that goes. And you can decide, there's no right or wrong answer to doing social media. So you can decide what works for you, what you like, what you don't like. And uh, we're, like Kelly said, we're here to help if, if you have any questions on that. And also we wanna give you guys uh, and girls something free, uh, some free airtime. So if you have a small business or if you have a nonprofit, we started this a couple of weeks ago when everything got super weird and it continues to get weirder. We are opening up our channel um, to free airtime to small businesses that are in the area that are trying to make things happen. And it's super simple. You can just go right to tommyshow.com slash airtime. And this is something that we have really seen success with. Um, and by success, I mean people are using it, which is what we wanted. Uh, we have dedicated a huge portion of our uh, daily content time, our daily uh, broadcast time to local businesses getting their message out on our, um, it walks you through it, four easy ways to make it happen. And on our app, there's a, there's a button called the open mic where you can record us a message. It comes right to our email. Our tech producer will polish up the audio and make it a 30 ish second commercial. All the information and instructions are there, but we've seen local restaurants. We've seen local DJs. We've seen moon bounce fun house providers. We've seen <laughs> decorators. We've seen nonprofits. We've heard from so many uh, businesses in Maryland and Virginia, DC, all around. And this is something we're gonna continue to offer up um, for goodness knows how long, but we have been so embraced and so loved by the small business community, by this community, by the DC community. 
we want to do what we can to give back and we don't really like cook well or make snacks or we wouldn't know the first thing. I cook, I cook well. Yeah. But you know, you don't have like to go containers. And so that's a problem. <laughs> and like, we can't make hand sanitizer. I don't know how to like sew masks. So this is the thing we can do and we're Fair happy enough. to offer it up to whoever, whoever wants to use it. Or if maybe it doesn't, it's not the right thing for you. If you know a small business that's struggling and a small business that wants to, to get some word out there in any way, please share that link with them. Um, we, hope, we hope that our air is full of free ads for a very long time because we well, want to support any way we can. I mean, we, we hope and we don't hope. Right. I mean, yeah, we would like to, you know, move, move. feed no, our I, husbands and dogs right. at some point. But yes, for the, <laughs> for the most part, we want to help out the small businesses that are, uh, that are around there. And with that, uh, let's, let's do questions. Anybody have any questions? Okay, sorry, I'm gonna jump in here. I don't know if you guys can see, I'm pretty sure we have, we, I know we have some questions, okay. um, but before we get started, I wanted to confirm with everybody that we um, would love to take a couple screenshots of this and be able to share it on social as we've just discussed the importance of that content. So if anyone has a problem with that, please let us know. We also. <laughs> We also will be recording this so that we can, if you miss any of these amazing nuggets, we will give a little highlight recap, but you can, you can find it on our website. I know Tommy and Kelly, you're going to have some snippets as well to share, but we just want you to have this information. And I also just want to give another shout out. You guys mentioned a few times throughout this, the ways that people could work with you. And so if you have a question about ways that Tommy and Kelly could work with you, don't be limited to by even what they said. So just make sure you reach out to them and find out ways to work together aside from their generosity with the, um, the free airtime, because I think that you guys have a multitude of ways that you can support people and work with them um, that they could hire you to do that. So I just wanted to make sure that they oh, understand all much. the things to do. Um, but with that, so I know that some of these questions, it looked like they were public. Um, so does that mean that you guys can see, I'm by the way, so oh, know at this, see, so yeah. forgive yeah, me. I can see it. Okay, so it looks like Andrea had the first one. It says from someone older participant, how do you look at the camera and also see the person talking? So I'm not, do you guys wanna? Yeah. Yes. I know, I, I know what you're talking about. Um, I think, you know, it's perfectly acceptable to look at the person talking. I think everyone knows that that's kind of what's happening here in this day and age. It depends on the format. Like if you are talking, doing a Facebook Live and there is nobody else, you want to be looking, which is what I'm doing right now at the green light on my computer and I'm looking directly at the camera. If you're having a conversation with someone, it's okay to look down at them and, and kind of you know, it, you're not looking at the camera, but I think that that's become sort of our new acceptable way to video conference to not necessarily look directly at the camera. It's so funny because my background, like, so doing TV, like we, 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 this is, so Kelly and I record the show on our phones because our studio that she's in is wired for Facebook Live and that's how we do it normally. But now we're each recording it into our phones. And so I will like stare at the lens and like not blink because I'm just, I'm trained to do that. <laughs> so yes, I, I, I think Kelly's way is a lot more, a lot easier. You're like, you know, don't like strain your eyes that way. And it, it is, you know, we're, we're getting more casual with this than ever before. Awesome. That was great. Thank you guys. And then it looks like we also have, oh God. Um, Oh, I see that when some of these are going to everyone, our wonderful community is supporting each other by answering some the of tribe. the people's Make questions. It happen. There you go. Yeah, so I don't want to be repetitive and, and waste anyone's time. Um, so it looks like some of these are kind of just out to the general community. I, um, I, I, I would I'd like to address the social media management please. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. Um, there are some tools, um, and especially if you're new to social media, to, to, to the point I was making earlier, um, go into it slowly, pick the one platform that you kind of want to own and get, get comfortable and get used to that. If, if that's something that's new to you, but there are some services that allows you to, um, schedule your posts in advance. And there's a bunch of them out there. I'm not really endorsing any of them. I use tweet deck. I, I, I tweet a lot. It's probably the, the platform I use the most. Um, and you can schedule tweets in there that have images or videos or thoughts. So if it's like National Dog Day is coming up a week from now and you want to post a 
picture of your dog, you could put that up there. I don't, you know, whatever. There are a lot of tools out there that can help you manage it. So it's not something that has to be a daily thought. Mm -hmm. um, it just, I would give some thought into what it is the message that you're conveying on these platforms. What is the consistency that you're doing at rather than just like throwing a random thought up there. Um, so there are, there are companies that will manage your social media from all different sizes. Um, Tommy, I know you use one, one uh, platform to schedule some of your things and manage. Yeah, I, I use buffer.com, B-U-F-F-E-R.com. Not a commercial. I, they don't pay me. <laughs> I pay them, actually. Um, but it's, it's great, and they have different levels of service. And I'll, I will spend like 45 minutes or an hour on Sunday mornings, like after I've fed the dogs and taken them out, like when the world is quiet, when the world used to be quiet. Um, and I would schedule, you know, certain posts throughout the week because there's things that you know are going to happen like National Dog Day or, you know, we were promoting and are promoting our free airtime for small businesses. Well, those posts can be scheduled ahead of time that I know that I've gone through and I've tweeted about it once every day this week. I know that's going to happen. Um, and then I leave myself big spaces in the day to be organic on, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook to share messages and to, to do that sort of thing. But Buffer is awesome. Kelly loves TweetDeck. There are a bunch of them out there. Um, trying to get the other one that we used. Um, it wasn't, uh, not Glean. Gain. 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 It was Gain. called yeah. Gain. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that and one I found was like, eh, but that's more if you're like a business working with an agency or somebody who's like writing stuff for you and you have to approve it. But if you're just a person, a single human, Buffer is awesome and, and so is TweetDeck. Uh, the other thing I would mention about social media is you don't get frustrated by it because you, you, if you're just getting started by it, you might not see the results. But the one thing I would tell you from analytically, what are the things when you post that instead of getting, you're getting more likes than normal, more mm -hmm. likes than the post that you did yesterday or last week or whatever. Try to hone in, be curious about what that is. What is it that you said? Is that something you should repeat in a different way? kind of know that audience of how they're engaging with you. If that post does better, think about how you can continue on that type of dialogue or that theme, because that's how people can, I mean, everyone wants to go viral, right? I mean, that's like a thing and people try to go viral and then they don't try to go viral and then they go viral. Um, so don't get frustrated by it because over time you will get more followers, you will get more engagement. I'm personally hoping to not be viral these next couple of weeks. <laughs> Gonna wash my hands and do all the things. That was right there, Tommy. Way to pick that up. That was very good. You should listen every morning. I'll, you get this much and so much more. I do. In fact, I get alerts on my phone, and you have some really cute things that you say right out of the gate to let oh, people know that you are. Thank you, you very much. There. So that's another thing you guys can log in and get those alerts. Um, there are, there was an interesting conversation happening here that I thought maybe you could elaborate on similar, which is a lot of this audience today are likely people that don't have a dedicated social media person who really understands it. And I know from personal experience, um, that, you know, there, it's not, there is a science to it, obviously, as you both have been saying, and it has to be thoughtful and strategic to some degree, um, but we shouldn't be afraid of it and not do it. But with that being said, how, what is realistic as far as if you, if it's like you have to, I know you start with one or two, but, you know, I see one of these questions, do you have a separate job for social media, media management? Um, and and who, who does it fall under in your organization? And depending on how bare bones your organization is, like, you know, sometimes it's the founder or the owner or, you know, something like that. So if you have some, like, things to share about that, maybe um, that might be helpful. I, um, well, Tommy and I both manage our own social media. Uh, we always have. But to look at some bigger examples of companies that are doing it really well, um, Jose Andres, um, the celebrity chef, the man that's like doing so many great things around the world has been doing something really interesting. And I've never, I've been following him for years and, and, and knew him way back when, like he would have barbecues in his backyard. Um, and now he's of course his global, global superstar, but he's been posting, um, 
recipes with his daughters in his own kitchen because of course he's quarantined and he's like this morning i think he had something up for um which i'm probably gonna make tonight uh <laughs> a, a a fried rice when he's saying like the vegetables that are getting soggy in your fridge like you might want to like just throw them in with a little spice and this and that and that and throw in some rice anyways i think it's it's so interesting because obviously that's his area of expertise but to see him in his home doing what he does usually you see him out with like a big paella dish in a disaster zone to see him kind of with his daughters and doing that it was such a interesting way so i like I, I think about brands going back to being like what's authentic to you what are you really good at and what can you share that may be that one thing and i i, I told this to tommy a while ago i in the middle i love an april spritz it's a cocktail it's april and Prosecco, it's really basic, but in the middle of summer, and it was kind of a big deal last summer, I made a cocktail online on Instagram and it kind of like went viral for a while. And I didn't even think, but it was just like, I was bored. It was a Saturday night, it was hot outside. And I'm like, I'm gonna make an April. Maybe people don't know what an April is. And, and I, I put it up on Instagram and it went, it, it did like, I put up so much content every day. That's what I do for a living. And all of a sudden this silly little recipe. So it's, it's almost like finding your passion and being authentic is more important than necessarily like promoting your brand. I, I, I would only share that example. And being in tune to the moment too. Um, you know, get yourself into what people are talking about. Like it was National Puppy Day and I tweeted, same thing. Like we, we put a lot of thought into the content that we post and I tweeted, hey fam, send me your puppies. And I had like a hundred replies of puppies. People were just like sending me puppy pictures. And I was like, okay, well, I'm done for today. I'll see y'all later. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, but you know, the, like the, the trending stuff that, that, that's rolling on the side of Twitter or Instagram, that's really helpful um, to, to spike an idea off of. Some of it you might not want your brand involved in, which is completely understandable, but there's also like really safe, friendly things that you can jump in on um, and you could you know, hopefully get noticed by other people who are, who are already um, com having a conversation about that specific topic. And also just a, a piece of warning, if you schedule content through Hootsuite or TweetDeck or whatever, just remember that you've scheduled things because if some kind of crazy news situation happens and you're like, hey, everybody, look at my April spritzes, you're going to look super tone deaf. Um, <laughs> so that's something that Kelly and I like cross check each other that like when things get weird in the universe, we're like, hey, did you, did you turn up your schedule? Yeah, did you get yours? So that way you're, you're safeguarding yourself from, from looking really tone deaf. Sorry. Um, okay. I saw a hand go up. Um, oh, David? David, 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 you're on mute though. You gotta, uh, someone's gotta unmute him. We can't hear him. Um, hold on. I, 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 hello, can you hear me? Oh, good. Hey. Hi, good. Yes, so I want to thank this opportunity to uh, appreciate what you have done. Um, I heard you about talking about podcasts and that's another way of uh, social media that uh, can do. And uh, I want to tell you a good news. Um, on Saturday morning, I did my first podcast interview sharing about uh, how I overcome my disability. Uh, this, I said, I sent a positive message to the world and I also mentioned one of the programs that is helping me and my family, I mentioned Main Street Housing. And I told them that the, gra the grand opening about Main, Main Street Housing will be in, in the coming months in 2020 for the month of, perhaps the month of by the month of July. So I, I express my gratitude for Main Street Housing. And that post, and that podcast is on uh, her name. The name of the person who who hosted the podcast. Her name was um, um, her name is Amanda Taylor. She is the founder of uh, Create a Change, and she wants people to to know that that there is an open door of opportunities not only for individuals with special needs, but for everyone. So I did want to, uh, to tell you that she's going to send me the podcast when, when it's 
finalized and I will share that with you guys because I, I, I share my gratitude for Main Street. I am also a Special Olympics athlete, so I share my, uh, my gratitude also for Special Olympics as well. And I also work for an organization called Spirit Club Fitness. I also share my gratitude for them too, because um, and now saying that everything is going viral, the exercise is also going viral too. So when, when, when that is finalized, I will be happy to share that with you guys on the social media. Yes, please. And whatever platform you're on, David, tag us and we'll, we'll share your podcast out. If it's on Twitter or Facebook, we'll, or Instagram, we'll share it on our story. That's awesome. That's yes. awesome. Uh, I, did, uh, I, 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 did, I thought that was something important to mention that when I did my, my first podcast uh, for the very first time, I did mention Main Street for being, I'm being very gratitude for, for them for giving me the opportunity to be part of the special family, Main Street. So how was, how was your experience being on a podcast? Were you nervous? Were you excited? Did you feel like you were ready to do I, it? I, I was excited, very, very emotional, very happy. That's awesome. That's awesome. And how did the podcast host find you? Did they, did they find you on social media? How did she find you? Uh, she found me because she had seen me for the polar prep lunch. Oh, cool! And uh, for this, she I did the polar prep lunch at Special Olympics, and she also has done the polar prep lunch. So she's and the, as she knows that I am a musician, so she says, "Could you have time for to do a? I'm hosting a podcast for." all the individuals with special needs and individuals without special needs. Could you like to be my first guest for, for my show? And I said, I said yes right away. Because, That's awesome. Um, I want to share my positive message to the world that uh, no matter what type of disability that you have, everything, everything can happen to you. If, if you put your, uh, positive mentality. True that, David. man. That's amazing, David. Thank you so much for sharing that story. That's so inspiring um, for so many people. And we're just, we are so grateful for you because you're what Main Street is all about. And all of us together being able to share our voices and our stories. So thank you for that. Oh, I see a little clap up there. Did Tommy mm -hmm. did you do that? Ooh, you're so tech savvy. I saw Stacy do it. And I was like, how'd you do that? Oh, reaction. <laughs> um, I, I hate like to your point about like following the tone of things. I have something else that just came up to me um, privately that I just wanted to ask getting back to like the nitty gritty of like how to, how to utilize all the things you guys are telling us. Um, you mentioned like National Puppies Day or whatever it was, like not everyone might know what that day is, right? So is there like a master calendar of, so you can keep up on the national whatever day it um, is? You know, if you, if you Google it, it, it will, not just National Puppy Day, if you Google it, National Days, you'll find the Margarita Day, the Pizza Day, the Puppy Day, all the different things. Um, but to t what Tommy was talking about earlier, um, there is a trending feature on Twitter. Uh, Facebook has one, I, Instagram has one, where you can, you'll know if you want to log into whatever social media platform you're using, you'll see the trending thing. Um, but if you want to plan for it, there is, there is a, there are all sorts of websites that will take you to a master calendar of all the days. Mm -hmm. And all the months, right? I mean, every month has some sort of different celebration and uh, there, there is a way to find them. I don't have a master calendar somewhere, but- There's a bunch online, yeah. So if, yeah. if you search like day of the you know, national day calendar, there's a bunch that like aggregate them from all over the place. Awesome. And some of them, like if they sound incredibly wacky, maybe just double check it, right? It's not like national, I don't know, like- green fox day you know <laughs> maybe you should double make sure that there's not someone's not pulling your leg <laughs> good to know we probably all need to double check our yeah, what yes. we're posting anyway right probably good mm -hmm. practice um does anyone we're, we're kind of wrapping up here i 
I saw a nice post to everyone with a thank you so much, Tommy, Kelly, and Main Street for today. I have to hop off. Wanted to let you know this is amazing. I'll be implementing so many of these tips. So you guys really, I mean, you knocked it out of the park with the big picture, the, the macro, the micro, the all the stuff in between. Um, you've been so accessible and obviously quite authentic and sharing your story and everything. And so we are super, super grateful to have you part of our community. I think um, that was Eric, by the way, who learned to close his window real time. Oh, <laughs> do you know Eric? Okay. No, but I, but I saw it, it looks Eric and Eric. I think, I mean, maybe there's another Eric, but I think he learned to shut the blinds. So. Oh, I love it. How about that? Okay, way to go. Okay. <laughs> we helped one person with one video tip today. It was all I love right it. There. Well, I was sitting up straighter and trying to make sure that I my my headspace was, you know, there. So, um, but does anyone have any last questions before we kind of completely wrap up? We're getting a lot of helpful <laughs> and, and wonderful um, I just want to say thank you so much to everybody. First of all, I love seeing all of your faces on here because I miss you guys. David, big hugs and kisses to you. Proud of you always. And Tommy and Kelly, you guys fucking rock. You are amazing. <laughs> and uh, like you so sorry, much. we can edit that out of the video later, but um, I just am so appreciative of your energy because we all need positivity and light and, and kindness and humor and all of those things right now. So thank you for bringing that to us. I really appreciate it. And one last big thank you to Sharon, who figured out how to do all this and work so hard. It was amazing. Thank you. And to the rest of you, whether it's through text or email, we're just going to probably follow up with you to make sure you learn something today and see if you have any follow up questions. So just be looking for that too. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Jillian. All right, I just before we leave, there was one last question. The website again for posting about business. Oh, oh yeah, Tommy yeah. Show. Okay, we, Marianne is on it. She posted your it. Tommy Show. Um, Love it. Backslash airtime. Um, okay, and so this is fantastic. You guys are amazing. We're so, so grateful for you. And um, by the way, um, we posted a spotlight on you in our newsletter. Thank if anyone you. hasn't, didn't catch it this month, I think, was the Tommy show, um, Tommy and Kelly. We did the spotlight on them. And so please read more about them and, and see how awesome they are. We're really grateful to have them. So, um, and thank you guys and, and be well. And it looks like from Jillian, it's a beautiful day outside. So get outside if you can. <laughs> At a distance. And I can't wait to see everybody for the opening in the summer when this whole thing is hopefully beyond us. And we can get back together, we can gather, we can do community, and we can continue to support the inclusion revolution that Jillian and her family have championed forever in Maryland and are truly, I, I'm the best buddies board chair in Virginia and DC. And what you're doing in Maryland is truly the model for the country. So thank you for what you're doing. And more people are watching Main Street than you know. So thanks for all you do. Thank you, thank you. And June 26 is our ribbon cutting if, it, if we stay on track. So keep, put that on your calendars. All right, thank you, thank you. Bye guys.